Hi everyone, my name is John Larrea and I'm from the University of Edinburgh. In this talk, I would like to introduce you a new operating system architecture called Server Kernel Operating System. This talk is structured in five different sections. First of all, I would like to talk a little bit about the context, the context in which this new OS architecture is located. Then I'm going to describe what is a server kernel from the theoretical point of view. After that, I'm going to introduce you John OS, that is a server kernel implementation for ARM processors. Next, a comparison between John OS and a traditional operating system like Linux. And finally, I just want to mention three research problems that this work left open. In the last years, there have been an exponential increase in the number of IoT devices because of the market demand. However, this increase also comes with improvements in performance, miniaturization, and energy consumption. Besides that, these improvements affect to the manufacturing process, which is reflected in a decrease in the component prices. In parallel with this price reduction, the IoT market increased yearly. And by joining these two trends, we can prove that the number of devices uh, grows at least as fast as the global IT market that is depicted in the chart in which the prediction for the 2025 is 14 times bigger than the prediction for 2017. Nowadays, no one gets surprised when a product that traditionally has been used to boil water comes with a mobile app that alerts you when the water is at certain temperature. And this continuous integration has produced an uncommon environment in which we have smart TVs, smart speakers, or even smart clothing, all connected to the user through a local network, like in this image. The base of this work is that all those devices with computational resources remain most of the time in a needle state. And the best example for that is smart lighting that is just a traditional light bulb with a processor and a Wi-Fi antenna. Those resources are only used when the user decides to send a command from his app to turn it on or turn it off, and the rest of the time these resources are idle. Given the previous scenario, why would an offload task on those devices when they are idle? Here is where when server kernel comes into, into the scene. The base of server kernel is the maximum uh, minimality principle to provide a high performance and low energy consumption solution to offload computation. Server kernel targets IoT devices and also generic embedded devices with any kind of network connectivity through which the task is received only when the device is idle and then executed. In order to provide a secure comp uh, compute offload, just a limited set of functionalities is required. In particular, only support for network, CPU and, accelerator and accelerators is needed to perform the offloading. We define a server kernel as a single space and monotask operating system with a limited set of functionalities. In general, we said that server kernel definition is based in four different ideas. First of all, exokernel. From exokernel architecture, we pick the way the operating system uh, provides access to the hardware resources by using a library called uh, libOS. This feature increases the performance by giving a closest access to the hardware. However, in exokernels, the application runs in user space and the kernel decides when it has to be run. On the other hand, unikernels deal with that problem by locating the application at kernel level. In fact, we can consider that system and application are the same entity. From real-time operating system, we have taken the low latency approach. But uh, we want to run any kind of ap uh, application in our system and not just one like in unikernels. So to deal with this, we decide to blend these three previous ideas with the function as a service paradigm. Function as a service is a cloud paradigm that allows a user to run a specific function into a remote server with a high level abstraction. The operating principle of server kernel from the client point of view has six different steps. First, the client has to identify a reachable server kernel on the network. Then the client authenticates the server kernel also in this step, in the server kernel uh, part, the client is uh, authenticated too. After that, the client compiles the application in the format supported by server kernel that, that has been announced to the client in the previous step. Next, a secure connection is established between the server kernel and the client. After that, the compile code is sent and executed. And finally, the client waits for the eventual results and then the connection is closed. 
I would like to highlight that the server kernel is not responsible for getting the data from the for the application, and it depends on the application and the developer. To demonstrate the server kernel capabilities, we have developed a prototype from scratch called John OS. John OS is an open source implementation of server kernel architecture written in C and ARM assembler that is capable of running bar metal. The current version supports different low-cost ARM boards based on the Broadcom BCM2835 chipset. As an example of these boards, we have tested it on Raspberry Pi boards. Although it is a prototype, JonoS integrates all the essential functionality required by the server kernel specification to successfully offload a task. To simplify the development process, the authentication process has been removed from this implementation. JonoS also comes with a Python and GCC based toolchain that allows to compile a function written in C in the JonoS executable format and send it to the JonoS uh, device. In this schema, John OS architecture is shown. The application run on, uh, runs on top of the cyclic executive that is based on the function as a service concept. Between the application and the hardware, there is just a set of libraries and modules, but there is no kernel layer. John OS is a modular operating system, and what we understand by module is, a, is for example, an operating system service, device driver, or libraries. In our particular case, Joan OS has four different services, network, debugging, memory, and cyclic executive. However, only the first three can be accessed directly by the application. The driver set, of, uh, the driver set only has support for four devices, network with a high-performance UDP IP stack, and a USB driver to access to the hardware because in the Raspberry Pi boards, everything is on top of a US, uh, USB hub. For serial communication, JonoS has a UART driver. JonoS also supports screens connected to the HDMI with variable resolutions. The last driver modules involves, involves all the routines related with the CPU and the interruption controller, like the mailbox protocol that is used to communicate the CPU with the GPU. Finally, a subset of the standard library has been implemented. As I said before, JonoS comes with a Python toolchain that works on top of the ARM node EABI cross compiler. This toolchain compiles an ELF ex executable with a specific parameters like position independent code or include all the data section into the text section by referencing the variables uh, with the IP pointer. Then, the, then from that binary, the, a subset of a, of a specific section is extracted and reassembled with the John OS format. Because this toolchain only compiles and does not perform any linking process, the system calls uh, address has to be resolved at load time. This, have, uh, this has been resolved by the use of a map structure that provides constant times in that process. In particular, the developer has to manually specify the, at the beginning of its application uh, which uh, functions are going to be used inside the application. To measure the performance of John OS and the server kernel architecture, we decided to compare it with Raspbian, a Debian fork adapted to run on Raspberry Pi boards that is widely used. The device used for this benchmark was the Raspberry Pi 1 Model B, and on the client side, we use an Intel workstation with serial and Ethernet connection. Um, because the server kernel idea is mainly based on the connection to remote devices, we decided to measure the CPU and the network performance. In particular, for CPU, we have measured two different values. CPU time as the time that the task is in the, inside the CPU and execution time defined as the time between the start and the end of the execution. As benchmark, we have used a MD5 hash routine implemented in C for both systems. For the network measurement, we think that the most representative parameter is the latency. So to measure the latency on both operating systems, we have used a echo server. For the results analysis, I would like to highlight that in this case, lower is better. The x-axis represents the number of execution of the MD5, MD5 function 
and the y-axis represents the time that the system needs to execute that load expressed in seconds. The, resu the results that we got from the CPU comparison are significantly better than we expected. In CPU time, the improvement is about uh, 45%, while in, while in execution time, is this percentage is increased up to 62%. Before they ex execute any test, we knew that Yon OS was faster than Raspbian, at least in execution time, because the context switching performed by Linux increased the execution time because the task has to share the same resources with other processes. Our biggest surprise came with the CPU time. In theory, it has to be very similar because only the time spent inside the CPU is accounted. However, we think that this difference is because after the context switching, all cache memory has to be updated and this takes significantly more time than the CPU instruction. This thing is not necessary in the server kernel architecture. Also in network results, a lower value is better. In this graph, the x-axis represents the number of requests done by the client and the y-axis, uh, like in CPU graphs, is the time that the echo server needs to answer all those requests and it is also expressed in seconds. The performance offered by John OS is up to nine times better than the than Raspbian performance, and we think that this is because three different factors. First of all, the context switching. Like in the CPU, the network is a resource that has to be shared with other processes, and this is directly reflect in the final latency. Second, in Linux system, when a message is sent, the kernel has to decide when this message is introduced in the NIC and this can queue that message producing a latency increase. Finally, we have implemented a high-performance UDP IP stack in John OS with the objective of avoid redundant, redundant or unnecessary check-ins that affect the performance. To finish my presentation, I want to mention some open research problems that have to be addressed in order to have a fully functional server kernel implementation and to prove the feasibility of this architecture. First of all, it is okay to have uh, prototypes on development boards, but the goal of this work is to implement it on real-world devices. Next, specify and implement uh, an efficient way to offload tasks over multiple devices with server kernel running on them. Um, also, it is important to create a full secure protocol to send the application to the server kernel, to authenticate both sites and to guarantee that malicious applications are detected and dropped from the execution. Finally, a fully integrated toolchain that automatically performs all the offloading procedure. You can find all the source code of John OS on my GitHub account. Thank you so much.